In this video, we're going to look at function shift rules. And the first rule we're going to look at is the rule for shifting functions right. Let's say we have a function y equal x squared. And this is your basic parabola function. The graph of y equal x squared is shown right here in the center. It's your basic parabola. It has a vertex right at 0, 0. And that's the lowest point of the parabola. Now let's look at the equation y equal x minus 4 quantity squared. It's the same formula as y equal x squared except x is replaced with x minus 4. The result is to shift that parabola from 0, 0, 4 units to the right, and we get this identical shape shifted 4 to the right. And you can see where the vertex is. It's at 4, 0. It's been moved from 0, 0 to 4, 0. And so the rule of thumb here is if you replace each x in the formula of a function with x minus some number, you're going to shift the graph to the right by that number c units. So in this case, we replaced x with x minus 4. The result was shifting the graph right four units. Now let's take a look at shifting functions to the left. If we have a function, again, here let's look at y equal x squared, your basic parabola, and it has that graph right in the center with vertex at 0, 0. Let's say we replace the x in x squared with x plus 3. The result is y equal x plus 3 quantity squared. And the graph of y equal x plus 3 quantity squared has the same shape as y equal x squared, but it's moved three units to the left. So the vertex is moved from 0, 0 to negative 3, 0. As a rule of thumb, if you replace each x in the formula with x plus some number, let's say x plus c, the graph will be shifted to the left c units. In this example, we replaced x in x squared with x plus 3, and the result was shifting our graph three units to the left. Let's take a look at the rule for shifting functions up. Again, let's look at y equal x squared. That's our graph centered at the origin. It has vertex at 0, 0. If we add to the function, we add 2 in this case, and we get y equal x squared plus 2. The result of adding to the function, or adding to the formula, is to move the graph up by that amount added. So our graph looks just like y equal x squared, except it's moved up 2. And you can see that's the top parabola, and it has a vertex that's moved up from 0, 0 to 0, 2. And our rule of thumb here is that if you add a positive value c to the formula, your graph will be shifted up by that amount. Here we added 2 to our formula, and the resulting graph moved up 2 units. And as you can probably guess, shifting functions down is done just by subtracting values from the formula. Here we have y equal x squared, again, the graph with vertex at 0, 0. And we compare that to y equal x squared minus 4, where we just subtract 4 from the formula. The result is this bottom parabola with vertex shifted from 0, 0 down to 0, negative 4. And the rule of thumb here is that if you subtract a positive value c from your formula, your graph will be shifted down by that amount. In this case, we subtracted 4 from x squared. So the graph of y equal x squared minus 4 had the same shape as y equal x squared, but it was moved down 4 units. The next rule we're going to look at is reflecting functions across the x-axis. To reflect a function across the x-axis, all we have to do is take the negative of the formula. In this case, let's look at a function y equal x squared plus 1. That's a basic parabola shifted up one unit. 
And we have this graph t um, here at the top. It's a parabola with vertex at 0, 1. Now if we take the negative of the entire formula, we get y equals negative of x squared plus 1. Now you could write that as negative x squared minus 1 if you distribute the, the minus sign. But we'll just leave it like that. The effect of putting the negative sign in front of the entire formula is to reflect the whole graph across the x-axis. So we just get the upside down version of x squared plus 1. It's reflected across, upside down, and a perfect reflection. So the vertex has been reflected from 0, 1 down to 0, negative 1. And the graph is upside down. The rule of thumb here is if you take the negative of the entire formula, your graph will be flipped over across the x-axis. In other words, it's going to be a reflection of the original graph across the x-axis. This next rule really isn't a shift rule, but it's a rule for vertically stretching and shrinking a function. Let's start out with our function y equal x squared. This is the one graphed in black. It has a vertex at 0, 0. Now we're going to look at what happens when we put a 2 in front of the formula and we look at y equal 2 times x squared. What happens is we get the same general shape, but we have this graph in red that's stretched out by a factor of 2. If on the other hand, we multiply the formula y equal x squared by 0 0.5, which is a half times x squared, we get the graph in blue, which has the same general shape, but it's vertically shrunk. At any rate, you can see that multiplying the formula by a coefficient vertically shrinks or stretches out the function. You get the same general shape, but it's shrunk or stretched out. Let's apply this to graphing a parabola. Let's say we're graphing y equal negative 2 times x minus 3 quantity squared. We have a few different rules in place here. First of all, we could say that we're shifting y equal negative 2x squared right 3 because the only difference between y equal negative 2x squared and this equation y equal negative 2 times x minus 3 quantity squared is we've replaced x with x minus 3. And remember that if you replace x with x minus something, you move the graph right 3. Also note that y equal negative 2x squared is a reflection of y equal 2x squared across the x-axis, because that's what the negative sign does. And also, y equal negative 2x squared is a vertical stretch of y equal negative x squared. The 2 vertically stretches it. So we have a vertical stretch, we have a reflection, and we have a shift to the right. We would expect our vertex to be shifted to the right 3 units at 3, 0, and the graph will have a shape that's stretched out by a factor of 2 and turned upside down. And this is exactly what we see when we graph it. The vertex is 3 units to the right. The shape is stretched out by a factor of 2. Instead of going over 1 and down 1, we go over 1 and down 2 on each side. The parabola is upside down because the negative sign makes it upside down. The negative 2 determines the shape, and the x minus the number determines if it's shifted to the right or to the left. In this case, it's shifted to the right. Let's look at another example of graphing a parabola that uses both a horizontal shift and a vertical shift, and also a vertical stretch. We're going to look at the graph of y equal 3 times x minus 2 quantity squared minus 4. And first let's look at that 3. The 3 is going to give us the shape of the graph. In fact, we could say right away that this is going to be the graph of 3x squared shifted right 2 and down 4. 
The minus 2 tells you that the vertex is shifted to the right 2 units. And the minus 4 at the end tells you it's shifted down 4 units. This means our graph will have a vertex of 2, negative 4. And it will be vertically stretched by a factor of 3. And here is the graph. The vertex is down at 2, negative 4, as we thought it would be. The graph has been vertically stretched. Instead of going over 1 and up 1 from the vertex, we go over 1 and up 3. Over 1 to the left and up 3.